Yes guys and welcome back guys to a brand new video guys and in today's video guys we are going to be talking about Manchester United's last game that we went and played Newcastle guys away from home at St James's Park it ended in disappointment a game that we should be winning it's embarrassing as well we're into a team that's completely out of form this season that have won only one game this season as well it's bloody embarrassing we were a shambles last night it's not good enough I personally think we've dropped two points some people might think we've gained a point but I think it's two points dropped, especially when you need top four as well. To drop points against Newcastle is embarrassing. This is a team that have lost to Man City 4-0, Liverpool 3-1. Not good enough from our players, absolutely embarrassing. But before I start today's video, guys, this video will not be fully edited due to the fact that our next game against Burnley will be in the next couple of days. It's on Thursday night. Currently filming this, it's Tuesday. Not a lot of time to edit this video, unfortunately, but please bear with me. My next video will be fully edited. Yes, guys, let's get straight into today's video. We made two changes from the last game against Norwich City. Talking about the starting eleven, so we started with De Gea, Delo, Varane, Maguire, Tellers, Tomine, Fred, Rashford, Fernandez. Greenwood and Ronaldo. Getting into the overall reaction now. Cavani rescues point for Man United at Newcastle. Embarrassing. What a shambles. Not good enough. Drop two points. It's disappointing, annoying and frustrating. The midfield was a joke. The midfield was far too open. We're slow, passive and sloppy. We were disjointed as a team. We couldn't string the pass together. No intensity, no tempo, no aggression and no energy. Too many misplaced passes. The passing was slow. We gave away possession too easily. We gave away possession in silly areas. We made too many mistakes. We had no control of the game. We were relying on individual brilliance and waiting for a moment. Newcastle deserved to win. Lucky to get a point. Newcastle will feel hard done by. Most players had a shit game. De Gea made some fantastic saves. Decision making was poor. Game management wasn't good enough. First half embarrassing. Second half not good enough. Overall crap performance. And yes guys, let's get straight to today's video. What did I make of the performance? Now, you know what, for half of this now, I'm just going to be spouting away because I am very, very disappointed what I saw out there last, last night against Newcastle. You know what, firstly I'm going to say, Newcastle were absolutely brilliant last night. They should have beat us. I don't know how they didn't beat us. They, out, they, out, they outplayed us, outrun us, and they should have beaten us. And um, we're lucky to come away with a point. And I'm, I'm embarrassed as a Manchester United fan to walk away from that game and say, you know, we've dropped two points. And we've dropped two points because we've not played well yet again. That's two games now, Norwich and Newcastle. Um, and we've not been able to perform at a high level. And after, all that, after that great start against Crystal Palace and you're thinking, well, can we try and maintain that now to the end of the season? But now the players are starting to, you know, playing the old regime like Ollie was in charge and it's just not good enough and I'm sorry but I'm sorry to say this but I don't know what's going on in training at the minute but it seems like the players are getting training instructions from Ralph Ranić and his backgrooming staff but these players cannot impl implement that on the pitch they're going onto that pitch and then they're own, and then they're in their own world you know they just want to play their own game you know there's no they're not together uh, as a team they're just all individuals and they're not playing as a team at the minute and when you play as a team like Man City, like Liverpool, you will dominate teams. We are not doing that right now, unfortunately. And the thing is, defensively, shambles at the back. You know, we get we get getting pulled apart from Newcastle, we got we kept getting pushed around. The defence was just a shambles, you know. All the oh, the last couple of weeks we've been brilliant, you know, tight compact frustrated teams but now that was just light work for Newcastle they out they outplayed us and they'll be scratching their heads thinking how do we not win that and you know what I'm embarrassed as a Manchester United fan to say you know we've withdrawn that with Newcastle it's, it's bloody embarrassing and I'm sorry to say this but some of those players need to be called out last night especially the players that have been here for you know five or four or more years you know they need to be called out because I'm sick and tired of these players and people are going on about get get Ralph Ranić out. I mean, he's been in the job for three weeks. For God's sake, get a bloody grip. He's been in the job three weeks and it's the players that are not doing the job at the minute. These players are getting coached now from, from proper coaches. You know, we've all been going on about the coaching stuff. They're all gone now. Now we've got better coaches in and the players are just going into their own world now. They're playing under the old regime against Oli. 
like as if Ollie's in charge. It's not good enough. And we made too many mistakes in that game. The passing was atrocious. I've never seen anything like it. Couldn't string a pass together. The passing was too slow. We kept giving possession away too easily. We kept giving it away in silly areas. We had no control in the game whatsoever. All over the place. We had no control of the game whatsoever. The midfield was an absolute joke in that. It was an absolute joke. You know, nobody in that midfield couldn't control that midfield. Out of position, getting pulled left, right and centre. You know, couldn't keep it tight and compact. Couldn't play as a unit. Couldn't play t uh, togetherness. All over the shop. It's not good enough. And... Um, there's just nothing there. We're disjointed as a team, getting pulled apart every single time, and we're slow, passive and sloppy. And sloppy is the word to describe that performance. We're not good enough, and the midfield was far too open. You know, it was not good enough in that midfield. Getting into the game now, I thought the first half kicked off. I thought, to be honest, I thought both sides started well. You know, I thought we, we started okay. In, in the game, but I think Newcastle had a, had a far better start on the front foot, aggressive, creating chances. United are trying to hang on by a thread, trying to defend properly, um, and uh, you know trying to frustrate them defensively. And then they're coming onto us, you know, and then they sort of just get that one moment from Saint Maximin. They score, they go one 0 up, and then and then I just think we were stunned, you know. We didn't know what to do, but then to to the leader by that goal, it was a it was a mess. It's a mistake from from Varane, and then people are trying to blame uh, Maguire as well. Poor positioning from Maguire. He needs to get tighter, and then he just gets a shot off. And De Gea was stunned. The players didn't uh, didn't know what to do, and there was just to be honest, there was no plan B as well. You know, in that game, it was just like let's go with plan A and let's try and see what we can do, and. Um, not good enough. When we went 1-0 down, sometimes we get a kick up the backside and we react. We couldn't react. We get in, we As we came back into the game a little bit, I thought the passing was off, couldn't string a pass together, trying to be too direct. They're really now a play too much as well. We're too direct in the game. We had to stretch them out. We had to, you know, use our... We had to use the wingers. And, um, you know, I think the full-backs were dreadful, not effective enough in the games. And um, uh, that game uh, is an example of those full-backs. Not good enough. I thought Delo shambles. I think wan is better than him. Um, so, I mean, it's just not good enough. Uh, first half was terrible. Passing was dreadful. Uh, they were all whinging at each other. And um, it's not good enough. And then second half, I don't even think we were that much better. I think they could have made it 2-0 uh, within a minute. I don't know how they didn't score. The Hay gets low, makes a brilliant save. Ralph then made two substitutions. One was Cavani, the other one was um, Jaden Sancho. And um, I thought with Sancho playing, that gave us a little bit of a boost. Cavani's movement in the box as well, that sort of helped us in the game a little bit. But sometimes Sancho got frustrating to watch as well. Cavani got in, got in the mix there, tried to make something happen. And then I think, you know, um, the game was getting getting stretched. It was going end to end. Um, then it was just all about. I mean, there was no creativity in the game. It was just all about when we got that chance, we had to take that chance and make it count. And then it, we got it to one one. We got it back level. And then it was just the fact that can we go and chase the, the game down and go and get a second? And then I thought uh, Newcastle on the front foot uh, tried everything that they could. Um, I mean. <laughs> I don't know how he doesn't score, but Jacob Murphy hits the post. De Gea makes a brilliant save. Um, and then, you know, just brilliant goalkeeper and kept us in the game uh, right to the end. And then um, and then just not enough. Um, in the Just not enough to get the job done against Newcastle, against a poor side in Newcastle. And um, it's not enough. It's not good enough. And I think the word to, uh, uh, to describe that performance was sloppy. You know, sloppy everything, sloppy passing. Uh, I think some some of, some of our movement was not good enough. Um, and I, I just think we're too. I think we're a bit lethargic in times, and I think we're too passive in times. And you know, huffing and puffing, struggling. Uh, Newcastle frustrated us. Couldn't we? Didn't know how to break them down as well. So, and when you hit. 
and when you have signs like that, you you know, it's not good. So um, I mean, that performance says it all, to be honest. And um, it's not good enough. And um, I, for me, I think it's two points dropped. At some point, some people might say it's a point gain, but two points dropped definitely for sure. If you if you if you're trying to get top four as well at the end of the day as well. Very disappointing to draw against a poor Newcastle side that are struggling this season. We seem pretty strange at the minute because we control the Palace game, we won and got the three points, but in the last two games against Norwich and Newcastle, we play like Ollie's in charge. Why is that happening, especially when we have a new manager? You know what it is, and I just said it just then, what it is is, I think these players are going on the training ground, they're getting all the coaching that they need to get from Ralph and his backroom and staff, they're getting told what to do, they're watching back the video footage, they're analysing the games back, so they'll be analysing that Newcastle game back today. What what went wrong? What do we need to do against in the Burnley game? But then they, they analyse the games back, they go onto the training pitch, they want to touch on a few things, and then I think all of a sudden then, the players go in their own minds, approach the game wrong, go in with the wrong mentality, the wrong mindset, thinking that it's going to be an easy game, and then the and then just like that, we go one nil. We go one behind, and we can't react the way how we react. We used to react with Ollie in charge, and then the players are, are going back to the old regime, thinking individual brilliance. Let's rely on some moments. Let's let's try and wait for a mistake to happen. But Newcastle, they made a few mistakes in the game. Yes, they did, but we didn't capitalise on the, on those mistakes, did we? So these players, what I think what it is is they're listening to his instructions and what they're getting told to do, but then as soon as they hit that pitch, they're thinking, they're, they're just going all of a sudden going back to the old regime, they're not they're not taking on, but I don't think they're listening to Ralph, and I don't think they're listening to the backroom and stuff, what they're being told to do, and then they're finding it difficult to break down teams, and when you can't break down teams, you're huffing and puffing, you're struggling, and you're trying everything that you can throw at it, you know, I think obviously yesterday proved that we showed the team spirit, and a bit of character at least, but I mean, you know, th th this is Newcastle. This is Newcastle that have the worst defence in the league, that are vulnerable defensively, conceding 42 goals this season, and we're huffing and puffing against like, in teams like this. Yes, we've had COVID, but that's not an excuse. You have to, we have to be better in these sort of games, and this is not Oli in charge, this is Ralph Ranjik in charge. At least he's still unbeaten, but I mean, for God's sake, boys, you have to do better. And uh, this is, that was the old regime, and these are the players that got Ollie sacked, and they still and they're, and they're still playing for Ralph Ranić. So to say R R Ranić out, it's not good enough because he's just been in the job for three weeks. Give him time for God's sake, and um, we've got two games in, sh in hand as well. So the players need to start working hard. In, uh, the players need to start working hard enough to earn it and to make the games count and to go and get the points that you need. And that's what Arsenal have been doing in recent weeks. They've made, them, they've made those games count and they've got the three points that they need as well. The crucial three points that they always need. And we're, and we're just going back to that old regime and then we're going in, the, in our own world and we're not, we're not concentrated and we're not focused. And we need to get back to the basics. The basics let us down as well. Couldn't win our duels, couldn't win the 50-50s. You know, losing the second ball. It was all about the second balls as well. Lost the midfield battle. Basics let us down yesterday against Newcastle. Not good enough. Was it a fair result? I think if you look at the game back, I think it probably is a fair result. Obviously, I think Newcastle should have won the game. Come away with that game, I think it is a fair result. Newcastle tried everything that they could. United tried handing on by a thread. Tried to see it out defensively. We were not good enough. At least we showed a bit of team spirit to get the goal. I think it is a fair result, yeah. 1-1 one, one draw. Disappointing on both ends. I think it was a fair result at the end of the day. Is it a point gained or two points dropped? Well, it's a bit of both. I think it might be a point gained, but then I'm hearing it's a tough place to go, St James's Park. It's not. City beat them 4-0 at St James's Park. How is that a tough place to go? City beat them 4-0. To say it's a tough place to go, you're talking a load of shit because... It's not a tough place to go. It was just the fact that they know it's Man United and if we want any some sort of points, it's this game. For me, I think it's two points dropped. Some people would say it's a point gained as well. Like for me personally, I think it's two points dropped. You need top four and you've dropped two points. Who is my man of the match? Well, Jesus Christ. Most of those played shit. I think starting with De Gea, I think De Gea is the only one that can go away from that game and say, I had a decent game. The rest, no chance. Delo, I thought, not good enough. Varane, 
It was a mistake for the goal. Aguirre was not good enough, just slow in times and sloppy as well. Tellez, not good enough. The two in midfield, the Jockle brothers, Fred and McTominay, dreadful. I thought Rashford was dreadful. Fernandez, at least he was better in the second half. Greenwood just couldn't get involved in that first half and Ronaldo was just nowhere, was the invisible man. And Jaden Sancho tried to make things happen. Cavani got us the goal and Matic came on too late. So. The only man that can really keep his head up high and say I had a decent game, kept us in the game, made some brilliant saves, is De Gea. De Gea is my man of the match, definitely for sure. How do we beat Burnley? So obviously we've got Burnley in our next fixture. Burnley, obviously, again, the same thing. The 18th in the relegation zone, fighting for their lives at the minute. Uh, whatever fixture they come, they'll throw, at, they'll throw anything at it. They'll see it's Man United, they know it's their FA Cup final. They'll come to Old Trafford with a game plan. And they'll want to try and, it's the game of their lives. They're fighting for their lives at the minute. They need, they need the points. United, I think they'll feel a little bit deflated after that result. They'll feel, will feel disappointed. Is the confidence gone after that? It could be. But um, I think it's just the fact that we need to start taking it one game at a time. Um, but uh, uh, this is a game for Burnley that they need to make it count. They want the three points. Um, you know, they're fighting for relegation at the minute as well. So this is a team that you have to win. You know, it's a must win, must three points. You can't afford to drop points. And we've already done that to Newcastle now. We can't do it again at home to Burnley. We've got to make this game count now. We've got to prepare well for this game. We're going to go in the right mindset, the right mentality. We have to go into this game with um, the right attitude, the right body language. Uh, we have to go out there and show that we are the proper Man United and we have to give a game for Burnley. Never mind about, you know, we have to puffed and, you know, we're tired. No, you've got to maintain those energy levels and that's what it's all about in football as well. So coming into this game for Burnley, they're going to be fighting for their lives. They're very direct in their play. They're physical. Uh, they, play, they like to play the long ball as well. They're well drilled. They'll pull us around. Um, they'll, put, they'll pull us out of position. They'll push us around as well. Uh, they're very technical as well. And they, some in some times and some glimpses in their defence, they don't show the desire to close players down as well uh, when you get into the box. And um, But w what we've got to do is, is we have to watch for that ball in from behind. We must defend properly as a team. We've got to be organised. We need to get the crosses into the box. The passing needs to be a lot more quicker. We need to be quick on the break, create the spaces, attack the spaces, drag them out of position, stretch them out. If they play with a deep line, attack them. Don't give them any confidence or momentum. Capitalise on their mistakes. Capitalise, we could capitalise on our set pieces. Maybe set pieces could come in a game like this as well. Defend properly on set pieces. Do not allow them any space and don't afford to make any mistakes. Creativity is a must in this game. We need a quick and bright start. Get an early goal would be key in a game like this. And obviously getting the first goal would be crucial. Got to be aggressive, got to be ruthless, make the runs in from behind, play with high intensity, high tempo, play of energy and purpose. Get between the lines, make the right runs in the right channels, pick out the right pass. Got to create the chances, take our chances, be clinical, be explosive on the break. The quality in the final third needs to be the quality in the final third needs to be there. Got to control and dominate the game. Don't uh, don't underestimate Burnley as well. The full backs have got to be effective. Decision making will be key in a game like this. Game management will be key. Don't leave any spaces or gaps open. We we'll need to be tight and compact. Defensively frustrate Burnley. We we'll need to have the desire to close them down. Got to be strong, committed, and play with a high line. Don't afford to be lazy. Don't make mistakes in silly areas. Play with heart. Play with fight, heart, passion, pride, commitment, determination, and desire. Show character and show team spirit. We've got to be switched on at all times. We need to be focused and concentrated. Commit men into the box. Don't be afraid to make a tackle. Be brave. Take risks. Don't give the ball away cheaply. The midfield needs to be and, and the new and the midfield needs to close them down. Going into the goals now. First goal. Bruno picks out Delo. Delo crosses the ball to Cavani. Cavani shoots. 
The ball gets blocked and Cavani reacts on the second attempt and scores for 1-1. Going to the stats now, possession for Newcastle it was 31.4% and for Man United it was 68.6%. Goals for Newcastle it was 1 and for Man United it was 1. Total shots for Newcastle it was 13 and for Man United it was 13. Shots on target for Newcastle it was 8 and for Man United it was 4. So half of that. Shot accuracy for Newcastle it was 61.5% and for Man United it was 38.8%. Shots in solid box for Newcastle it was 5 and for Man United it was 8. That's how solid box for Newcastle it was 8. And for Man United it was five. Total passes for Newcastle it was 259 passes, and for Man United it was 566 passes. The pass accuracy for Newcastle it was 64.5%, and for Man United it was 80.4%. Getting to the substitutions now, Fred went off for Sancho. Talk about Fred's performance. Has his plus points for Ranix, but energetic pressing needs to make way for incisive passing on the nights like this, and his distribution was awful. Greenwood went off for Cavani, talk about Mason's performance. Fortunate to come off at half time, not because he was great, but because he was the best of a poor bunch in attack, looked lively around the edge of the area. But Tom and I went off for Matic, talk about Scott's performance. Chavely and Longstaff won the midfield battle, which is damning indicament on United's contributions. Battle hard and then did improve in the second half when he asked to be lone holder. Next up we've got Burnley. Burnley at 18th in the table. Now coming into a game like this against Burnley, Burnley know coming into this game it's going to be a game of their lives. They're going to come into this game. No, it's Man United. They know this is going to be their FA Cup final. We have got to be, we've got to play with energy. We've got to play with purpose. We've got to be aggressive. We've got to be ruthless. We've got to be aggressive. We've got to be on the front foot. But then the question is, can we maintain it though for the rest of the 90 minutes? That's a big question. I think in a game like this, we have to come out better. We have to come out fast on the front foot against Burnley because Burnley all just want to sit back play with a deep line defensively frustrate us and it's the matter of fact of what we do we have to make sure we create the chances we have to be on the front foot create the chances and when we're in front of goal we have to be clinical and take our chances as well in a game like this it's Burnley they're 18th on the table it's going to be one of the game of the lives battling to stay up they're in the relegation zone they want to get out of it they want to try and pick up points in this it's the matter of fact however we play in this game we've got to turn up to a game like this we've got to perform for a full 90 minutes we're going to make this game count as well we cannot afford to drop points it's a must win can't afford to drop points yet again if we've dropped more points again questions have got to be asked we've got to win this game against burnley and if we don't make this one count, heads are going to be turning at each other. We're going to make sure we have to defend properly. After going with the right mindset, the right mentality, we have to prepare well for this game. Going with the right mindset, the right mentality, we have to turn up and perform well for a full 90 minutes. If we can do that, we'll win the game against Burnley. We've got to be aggressive, get at them as well. Burnley are scoring 0.9 goals per game. Burnley are conceding 1.4 goals per game. Burnley have won one, drawn eight and lost six. They've lost to Brighton 2-1, Liverpool 2-0. Everton 3-1, Arsenal 1-0, City 2-0, Newcastle 1-0. Burnley have lost most of their games away from home, which is four. Burnley have the seventh best defence in the league. The players to look out for is Pope, Tovotsky, me, Peters, Cook, Goodmanson, Brownhill, Lennon, Westwood, Wood, Barnes, McNeil, Rodriguez, Corley and Vidra. All I just want to say is this, guys. It's been a cracking year and um, all I just want to say is this, guys. I'll see you in the new year. All you have to do is just, just leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new. I'll see you guys in the new year and peace.